In this video, we're continuing our BigQuery tutorials uh, with a tutorial on some commonly used functions within BigQuery. So this is following over from last uh, week where we looked at just getting started in BigQuery, how to access these public data sets. And now we're gonna have a look at kind of more advanced queries. So we're having a look into this data set here, which is taxi trips, uh, which is in Chicago taxi trips in the public data set. Having a look through some of the fields here, each trip has a unique key, each uh, trip has a taxi ID, and then each trip has a start and end time, um, the trip durations in seconds and miles, the fare, um, the payment type and company. And there they are some of the fields we're gonna be looking at today. So I'm gonna query the data set here in a new tab, and that gives you kind of a basic query, but I'm gonna be copying in my queries here just to save time and go through line by line on the explanation. So looking at the first query here, this query is just going to count the number of trips for each taxi and order that by the number of trips descending. So what we're doing here is we're selecting the taxi ID, we're counting the number of trips or the unique key for each of those taxi IDs, we're grouping by the taxi ID because we're grouping by what we're aggregating by and we're ordering them by the number of trips. So a quick run of this query, we have each trip and each, sorry, I'll just get this out of the way. We've got each taxi ID and the number of trips uh, that taxi ID has taken. So you can see from here quite easily, there's 9,406 unique taxi IDs. And then we have the largest number of trips being 78,309. So the next query we're gonna have a look at um, is to count the number of taxis. So we're going, another level and we're going to go by company. So I'm gonna select the taxi company and then from there I'm gonna count the distinct number of taxi IDs as number of taxis per company. Because as you can see here, this taxi here is probably in the same company for 78,000 trips. So we don't wanna count the number of lines this taxi has taken. We wanna count um, that taxi as one within the company to see how many taxis per company. Um, so we're taking company, distinct taxi ID count as the number of taxis and then we're grouping that by company and ordering uh, by the number of taxis. So we run this query here, the results, we kind of get to see the taxi companies and how many taxis each taxi company has. So top cab is, is something we're gonna be using later. That's one of the taxi companies there for later on. Um, so the next thing we're gonna show you is a approx count distinct. So this is a count distinct of the number of taxis. This is the exact number of the number of taxis. But as data gets very large, uh, some of these queries can take a long time. So Google have introduced an approx count. So it's an approx count distinct um, function. So instead of here where I'm going count distinct taxi ID, what I'm doing here is I'm approximately counting distinct taxi ID as the number of taxis. Everything else stays the same with this query. I'm gonna run this. You can see that this runs faster than the last query, but it's slightly wrong. So this is the right number of taxi affiliation services, number of taxis for the approx count distinct. It's in and around the right answer, but it's not exact. And this is to be only used with large data because you're not getting an exact figure. But if you want an approximation, then the approx count distinct just runs a lot faster uh, than the count distinct. So the next group of functions we're gonna look at are aggregate functions. So we looked at a count already, but let's look at a few more in here. So again, we're taking the company, we're counting the distinct number of taxis, we're gonna count the number of trips as well. So we're counting the distinct number of taxis, we're counting the number of trips per company, we're summing up the amount of miles as total miles. So that's the, the sum of the number of miles of each trip. We're taking an average trip miles, we're taking a min, we're taking a max, and we're grouping all these by company. So all these under company are aggregates, so we just need to group by what we're aggregating the by, which is company, and we're ordering by the number of taxis descending. So when I run this, I have now a company, number of taxis, number of trips, total miles, average miles, the min miles, so this is the lowest number of miles on a trip, and then max miles, which is the maximum number of miles on a trip. 
So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to clean this up a little bit because as you can see that the floating point is going a bit mental on the total miles and the average miles. So we can introduce a new function called round which will clean those two up. So everything else of this query is the same as the last query. All I'm introducing here is a function to round this to two decimal points. So that function is round. So I wrap my sum in the round function. So it's round bracket and then an apostrophe, then a two and close bracket. And that will give us the number of miles uh, in a more user-friendly output. So you can see that the miles here now is maximum of two decimal points and the average miles are all also a maximum of two decimal points. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to increase the, uh, increase the granularity slightly on this. So instead of looking at company, I'm going to look at it by company and payment type. Um, so I'm going to take company and I'm going to going to concatenate that to smash it together with the payment type as well and then we can see these um we can see all of these points for company payment type what we could also do is we could take these company payment type as as separate columns and then group by both company and payment type but for this one i'm just going to concatenate them together into one field so this field will now become the company and the payment type and to do that, you just do concatenation, your fields, and then I give it an alias in here as comp payment. And I'm going to group this by comp payment now. And the reason we can group this by an alias is this, this will um, take place before this here. So we can use an alias we've created in here to group by. I'm just going to run this. And now I've got my comp payment row. This is the, the taxi company and the payment type aggregate it together um, and then I have all my uh, analytics based on those features there. So you can see taxi affiliation service credit card, taxi affiliation services cash, taxi affiliation services no charge in there. Now that still doesn't look great so what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce another concatenation to this line here just to increase um, the readability. So what I'm doing now is I have a nested concatenation so instead of concatenating company and payment type together and just smashing them together, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to concatenate company with a space hyphen space, and then I'm going to concatenate that with payment type as comp payment. So the only thing changing is I'm introducing a nest in here and I'm adding another concatenation there. Just going to run this. And then you can see taxi affiliation services, space hyphen space, credit card, and then that looks a lot nicer if you're going to put it into a dashboard or something like that. I told you earlier we were going to have a look deeper into Top Cab because they had about 28 cabs altogether. Um, and this is where my new query is coming from, where we will discuss count if. So this is the new function we're looking at here, count if. So what I'm doing is I'm selecting uh, the taxi ID from where company equals Top Cab. So this is just 28 cabs. And I'm counting if the fare is over $20. $20. So first I'm going to do a count unique trips as trips. So that's the number of trips per taxi ID. Then I'm counting if the fare is over $20. So it'll only count fares that are over $20. I'm going to call that high value trips. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this high value trips by the count um, of unique key. And I'm going to have that as a high value percentage. And we would love to do this. So we would love to do high uh, value trips divided by trips. Because these are the aliases we've created for both of these. But the function hasn't executed the, 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 the SQL hasn't executed these two yet. It doesn't know they exist. So instead of using the aliases, we have to use the calculations in order to calculate this high value percentage. So we're going to run this. So we have our trips, we have our high value trips. So these are the trips over $20. So you can see a couple of our larger uh, taxi drivers or larger trips um, have a good percentage of high value fares. So this first one has 36% of his fares are over $20. The second one we've got 43% and the third one we've got nearly 54% 
our high value percentage trips. And we can take this a step further and we can then bucket those using a case statement. So this would be buckets for the likes of an analytics dashboard. You want to take that out to explore the data in Data Studio, something like that, which we'll be going over later on. It's nice to have a couple of buckets. And the bucket I'm going to use for this instance is a call tier. And I'm going to make tier from a case statement. So as it, how a case statement works is you declare it with case and then you end it as what you want the column called. So I'm using the case statement here. So case when the high value percentage, which is this calculation here, is greater than 0.5. I'm going to call that taxi driver a high roller and that's the taxi driver's category. When it's above 0.4, I'm going to call this taxi driver a mid tier and then else we're going to call him a run of the mill because he's only taken on a uh, lower value trips on a lower than a 0.4 uh, basis right so i'm going to run this query here so again just before i run it you can have as many wins in a case statement as possible so i could have a hundred wins would be a hundred different categories i'm doing a case when a condition then when a condition then and then else is everything else and i'm ending the case statement as what i want the column to be called it's going to run this and then I have my categories uh, for each tier so you can see I've got a 0.36 there they're run of the mill I have a 0.43 or mid tier and over a 0.5 is a high roller so I hope you enjoyed this video just introducing a couple of useful functions in here and um, hopefully this helps you with your big query and allows you to write better and uh, more useful uh, queries so you can take that data out and build really really unique and eye-catching dashboards so i hope you found that useful i'll see you next time for another big query video where we'll be going over specifically all the date functions within bigquery